Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on Midday at 1230. I am Lisa High filling in for Amber Freeman. And I'm Adam Banks. Well, Adam, welcome to the show again. Thank you. It's very nice to be sitting here with you. This is the very first time me and you have hosted together. I know. We've kind of chatted behind the scenes. Uh, the last time you were in the studio, we got to know each other then. But, okay, so I have all kinds of questions. Okay. You know. First of all, how was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? My weekend was actually pretty good. I did a lot of uh, promotion for my radio show this weekend. I went to an event called Best of Bruce. Uh-huh. And uh, it was free beer, live music, and it was free promotion for the show so it was great good time how awesome is that well you know mine my weekend in comparison I went to a family reunion <laughs> that has to be really fun or it was pretty awkward and bad how was it that was, it was it's always a little awkward but it wasn't bad at all I, I really you know it was good seeing the family oh, and I, sure I've been is. so busy this summer I haven't had a chance to really get up to Ohio to see my family so but you know um, compared to your weekend it's like you know mine was nothing like that <laughs> well you know you said that we uh, we are just now getting to know each other I feel like that we have become a lot closer because over the weekend you and me became Facebook official that's right we did we did we yep. became friends on Facebook yep. so I, I did get to see that you went to a family reunion <laughs> so I did get to see did that I stalk you did, was I the one that sent you the friend request I think I was actually no it was me that sent was it to it? you oh, yes okay, so you're the stalker yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm the stalker <laughs> <laughs> no that's great you know Adam I wanted to ask you too. You have a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about this podcast that you're doing. Sure. So it's called Off the Cuff. Okay. It is now on the radio. So it went big time there. Ah, nice. Yeah, it's on WLXU 93.9. Okay. It's on Thursdays from 4 to 5. Mm -hmm. The best way to describe Off the Cuff is just real raw talk radio. Okay. It discusses everything from current events to pop culture to sports. So we hit a little bit of everything. Now, how do you go from having a podcast? Because you started this. Um, on your own mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you hit big time with the radio how does that how did that transition happen I'm baffled by this well so I am someone who has always lived by this if you hang around the barbershop long enough you'll eventually <laughs> get a haircut so and people are probably like why haven't you got a haircut <laughs> but no I uh, actually just kept being persistent with it yeah I just I, no matter what I was constantly just put out an episode every single week, no matter how uh, much, uh, you know, it was difficult for me. Right, But, right. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, after through a lot of consistency and promotion, it yeah. just ended up on the radio. So you don't stop at the nose. You keep going. You you persevere right through all the nose that you would get from I, people. I definitely try to, yeah. yeah. Rejection is something that I'm used to. Okay, well, good, because we have on our next topic <laughs> that we're going to be talking about, have you ever felt the sting of rejection? Abs and that's, absolutely. Have you? And I I, have. I, all of us have. It really, I mean, and it's called a sting because that's exactly what it feels like. Mm -hmm. You muster up all the courage to reach out only to receive the brush off. It's enough to make you want to absolutely put yourself, to never put yourself out there ever, ever, ever again. However, you must or you'll never find that special someone. Now, first of all, how do you deal with, with rejection, Adam? Well, I am used to it. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if it's just me. Uh, I'm a really good friend, so I get put in the friend zone a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to relationships, I, you know, I just, I have to under, people have to understand that not everybody is for everybody. Right. And everybody has a type. And right. I've always kind of wondered, what does that mean? What does type mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you can meet somebody that you're attracted to. They're a wonderful person. They're great. They check off everything on your list. Yeah. But you're st they still don't have that thing with it's you. It's that chemistry. Yes. It's the chemistry. You know, that to me is so important. I mean, you're right. You have all the checklist of everything. But when it comes down to chemistry, it's either there or it's not. Right. It's either there or it's not. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to accept that you are not the best person for everybody and they're right. not the best for you. Right. Well, here are some psychologist approved tips, not just Lisa High approved tips. Okay. These are psychologist approved tips um, for people that when you're trying to get through and past rejection. So the first one, allow yourself time to process your hurt feelings. I totally agree with that. You need you need downtime. You don't need to move on to your very next, you know, person that you, you know or individual that you're wanting to possibly be in a relationship with. But you need to really take some downtime and, and think about, you know, how you're feeling and, and kind of process that. Don't you agree? Absolutely. You time heals all wounds. It really does. Mm -hmm. And I think just giving yourself enough time to accept that this has actually happened to you because some people yeah. don't. They try to do a lot of things to forget about it. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some time to think about what actually happened. Right, right. I mean, you know, even as much as you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it stings. We don't want to dwell on it, right? No. Yeah, so, well, and this is the next one. 
heal your bruised ego by listing what makes you great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it sounds kind of cheesy. I don't know. When I read this, I thought, this sounds kind of cheesy. You're going to sit down and actually make a list of what, you know, what it is that y you're feeling boohoo about and, you know, and, and uh, you know, what's, what do you feel good about yourself. But you know what? The more I think about that, we do, you know, we naturally want to kind of go over in our minds over and over and obsess with certain things. Um, and, and generally, when you're kind of a perfectionist or anything like that, you really can obsess with some of the bad things, um, you know, about yourself and not be forgiving of yourself or not be accepting of yourself. How do you feel about that? I completely that? agree. You know, we're not, we're human beings. Right. We're not robots. We're not perfect. Uh, there's not been a perfect human being on this earth. So, like, mm -hmm. there, we have to understand that we have things that not everybody's going to enjoy about mm -hmm. us and like about us. So, just, we should focus on the things that we can bring to the table. Right, right. And whether that's uh, just uh, love or whether that's just emotional support, we yeah. all have things that we have that's great about us. I love that. <laughs> you're, 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 are you single? I am. <laughs> I had to get that out there. I am. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> okay, well, let's get to our third one while he's uh, making eyes at the camera. <laughs> um, examine your own role in what got you rejected, but don't beat yourself up. And we just mentioned this earlier, yeah. too. It's all kind of tied together. It's just, it's, it's allowing yourself to you know, be who you are and accepting that. And I think it, bottom line is you are who you are and you can make some changes, but for the most part, you know, it, it's not, you're going to be who you are and you need to find somebody who's going to be accepting of that. And embrace that yeah. because you have to live with this person every day right. when you're in a relationship with them. Right. You've got to be with them every day. So you, they're going to eventually find you out. Yeah, yeah, so they are. So put it all out on the table. That's right, that's right. And the fourth one, surround yourself with people who make you feel valued. Yes, I like that. Surround yourself that. with good people, good friends. You know, it, that's so important for, you know, just getting you out of any type of funk when, you're, when you've been rejected, don't you think? Absolutely. You know, it's, and, and that's with anything. When we get rejected in relationships or right. from a job mm -hmm. or just something that we really wanted to do but we couldn't do it because we got rejected. Right. It's just important to surround yourself with people that uh, build up your character and put you on a pedestal and make yeah, you feel special. I agree. Rejection just makes us grow. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, that was interesting. And, you know, it kind of, now we're going to go from one topic that's kind of a <laughs> Debbie Downer <laughs> over to another one. Hey, um, it's about feeling down as summer fades. It's, it's, you know, do you ever feel when summer is winding down that you just, you know, you start getting kind of the blues? Do you feel that? Yes, and I'm feeling that right now because I, I don't know if you know this, but outside the studio, I'm a college professor full right, time. Right, right. So I have that feeling just like the kids do right now. I have the back to school That blues. you had to go back to school. And, yes. And, and, yeah, my kids were throwing down on the first day of school. They did not want to wake up. It was crazy. Well, being stuck indoors and having a chaotic schedule, nostalgia, habit changes, all of those things together are, can be a factor of succumbing to the August blues or seasonal affective disorder. I didn't even know that there was a title for this, SAD. Experts believe that SAD affects less than 1% of the population, making it much rarer than winter depression. Here are some things that you can do, though, to prevent SAD. So here's the first one. Take care of your body. Okay. we got to exercise. we got to eat. eat Decent. Drink okay, I, I'm not even going to say right because none of us, do we re any of us really eat right? But if we can try to take a little bit better care of our bodies, it's so important. Um, number two, engage in activities that you like. Oh, yeah, that's very important. Just, I think it is, too. Yeah, I, I don't understand when people say they don't have hobbies. What do you do in your right. everyday if you don't have a hobby? Right, right. Well, you know, I have a hobby. I love playing volleyball, uh -huh. and I love it because it does. You get into the group, you're, you're, you know, out there playing, and you're exercising, but you're also kind of socializing and getting out of your little shell. They just, you know, what this advice is saying is don't get, don't allow your depression to isolate you from other people, and that's really important. So number three, don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed by social media. Boy, I'm guilty of this. I do get overwhelmed with social media. Oh, yeah. I think I'm guilty of it as well. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. But you're not allowed to do that. You're getting these su summer end of summer blues, so you need to stop doing that. You can't get overwhelmed with it. <laughs> and Even though it, it's easy to do that, you yeah. know. Sometimes social media can, uh, you try to compare your lives to other people on social media, and you see right. them out here having all this fun, and here I'm going back to school working. Here we like, go. Ah. <laughs> Well, coming up as parents, how do you tell or how do you feel about people without kids filling up the lines at Disney World? Well, apparently, childish millennials 
love to go to Disney, but some parents aren't too happy about it. Find out all the details after the break. Keep it right here. Welcome back to Midday. Okay, childless millennials say that they love going to Disney. In fact, one millennial wrote about her remembrance of Disney as a child, expressing that her experience as an adult was just as magical. Zuli Rain said that she and her friends spent their days at Disney in complete joy, racing from ride to ride, eating all the sugary great foods that they have, and laughing with delight and mesmerized by all the magical characters. In spite of the enchantment making millennials happy, though, some parents are not so fond of the idea. One parent stated in a Twitter post, get this, quote, Disney World is for children. A people without children need to be banned. Mothers with children should be allowed to skip all lines. <laughs> How do you feel about this, This Adam? is ridiculous. <laughs> Because I have always heard people say when they grow up, they enjoy Disney World much better than when they were kids. Right, right. So, like, I want to experience that. I have no children, and I still want to go to Disney World and, ex and experience it as an adult. Because when I was a kid, right. I got to go to Disney World, and it was fun, loved it. Uh -huh. But I still think that as an adult, I would be able to appreciate it more. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many people. Number one, okay, I have kids. Yeah. I have two children. And um, I get... I get what they're saying about the lines and all of that, but that's all a part of Disney. I mm -hmm. mean, it's not, you know, you, yes, there's going to be tons of people there, all, you know, tons of families. They all want to get on the rides. It, there's going to be long lines. It's just the way it is. So, you know, you have to, as a parent, you have to be accepting of that. Now, I also have a lot of single friends um, that don't have, or married friends that don't have children, mm -hmm. and they love going to Disney. Yeah. I and mean, they love it. And a lot of times, too, a lot of children, I mean, there's a lot of children out there that don't get to go to Disney World as a child. Mm -hmm. So this is, as an adult, as they become adults and they finally get to go for the first time, why not? I mean, I, th I think that's utterly ridiculous. I mean, obviously, I would never want to ban anyone from Disney World in any way, shape, or form. And as long as the adults, you know, they know that they're going to be in lines with all the kids, too. And as long as you're not being obnoxious as an adult, you know, then then what, what the heck, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I... I would say that she has probably had just a bad experience at Disney World yeah. with a bunch of single adults, and she's probably asked questions. She's like, do you have any kids? And they're like, no, I have no kids. And they probably were acting out, so she's now grouping us all together that we're all like that. Right, right. But, no, I think it's ridiculous. I would be very offended if somebody told me I wasn't welcome at Disney World because right. we all grow up watching Disney movies, mm -hmm. so we're all familiar with the Magic Kingdom. Right. I mean, I just, I love it. I love it as an adult. I loved it as a child, too. I was lucky enough to be able to go as a child and um, you know after what a 15 hour drive with our travel trailer down to you Florida, drove my father did oh and um, you know driving all of us kids you know and we're all driving everybody crazy in the car and stuff so we would get there it's just it was so much fun though I mean it was such an experience but as an adult you really do I mean you get to see and experience so much more from a different perspective and you get to see it through your children's eyes too which is you know a wonderful thing but I totally I mean every time I've been there I've never had adults that have been disrespectful you know around the kids or anything like that I just haven't had that experience no I think it's completely ridiculous I think it is too well coming up wild time chef Allison Davis is in the kitchen after the break and she's making a Mediterranean club sandwich wrap and it looks fabulous you got to keep it right here Welcome back, everyone. The Community Action Council's signature fundraiser to eliminate poverty is just days away. And here with us with the details about this year's A Summer Soiree is Cheryl Cleaver and Melissa Tibbs. Welcome back to the show, ladies. Thank you very much. Hi, Thanks thank for having you. us. So, so, okay, so tell us about the Community Action Council. Sure. What exactly is it? Sure. So Community Action Council is a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that works to address the causes and conditions of poverty here mm -hmm. in Lexington. We were started in 1964, um, born out of the war on poverty with the launching of the, the signing of the Economic Opportunity Act of 1964. Mm -hmm. And so we are designated to serve Lexington Fayette, but also um, the counties of Bourbon, Harrison, and Nicholas. And we have programs and services throughout 
um, those counties and 17 counties total in Kentucky. And we're really here to work alongside people who are seeking economic security yeah. and an opportunity to become more self-sufficient. So you have your hands full, right? We do. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a hashtag. It's called the Lexan Poverty Movement. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that hashtag. So that hashtag is really our way of characterizing all of the work that we do. Community Action Council works, as I said, in 17 counties. We offer Head Start services. We work alongside people who are looking to increase their employment or their education. And so rather than just talking about one thing in isolation, the Lexan Poverty Movement is really our way of saying everything that we do is all designed to work together and to help people move along the pathway out of poverty. Wow. And so this Friday is our signature fundraiser called the Summer Soiree, uh -huh. and it is part of the Lexan Poverty Movement. Okay, so let's talk about the sure. soiree. What can people expect? I think uh, Cheryl will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's my specialty. Um, so a summer soiree is our annual signature fundraiser, and that's where Community Action Council brings together our community partners, our supporters, our participants, our staff, and we have a great time inside the venue. Mm -hmm. um, it's at the Grand Reserve, 7 p.m. on Friday. And in that moment, we celebrate the great work and the dedicated efforts of Community Action Council, and we honor and recognize our staff members and our participants for moving along that pathway out of poverty. Nice. Okay, I have a question. How does the Summer Soiree help the council meet its mission goals? So the, the event itself is a combination of our community supporters, and that's where we cannot make it happen without our stakeholders and our sponsors. A special thanks to uh, Central Bank and Trust for being our platinum sponsor this year. But in addition to our stakeholders and our sponsors, having the event raises awareness and it allows us to build capacity so we can expand our programs and services and extend the help to those in need. Oh, and yeah. how long have you all been doing this? How long has this soiree Since been? Oh, well, the soiree has been, yeah. uh, this is our fourth year. Is it? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And yeah. then how long has the Community uh, Action Council We are been? starting our 55th year. That's amazing. Wow. Yes. That really is. Yeah. That is. And so people, they, th how do they contact you to find out more information about uh, attending the our, soiree? Our website, um, comaction.org, it's uh -huh. C-O-M-M-A-C-T-I-O-N.org, okay. is there's a link provided, so you can click on the link, and then you can get tickets to the event. Okay. And then there's other programs and services. There's a lot of information on our website, so we always invite our, our supporters, the community, to go to that website and get the information they need. Gotcha. And to like us on Facebook. Of course, <laughs> of course. Can't forget Facebook. And attire, of course, what is the oh, attire? Oh, yes. So the attire is cocktail. Uh -huh. um, it's a sophisticated night where you get to come out and dress to express and have a great time. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ladies, so thank you so much thank for you being for with us. Thank you for having really us. I appreciate it. And for more information, we have your information up on the screen. Please reach out to them. Get your tickets. Support such a great cause. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. And we will see you tomorrow. Come back.